This season, we didn't get any new exotic armors to play around with and experiment with, which is sad, but not the end of the world. We did, however, receive some new exotic weapon, with Vision Zero being a decent anti barrier and endgame weapon to carry. However, the Mandicore SMG has received some mixed to bad results from users. Now, from what I understand, the weapon doesn't feel that exotic to use, and its exotic core design relies on players to stay exposed to make full use of its perks, which makes it very hard to use in end game content. Now, I won't be around the bush. The weapon does suck because of how exposed you've got to be to make full use of it, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be, and I have a build that can elevate some of the issues by increasing health regen via constant devour, gain around a 141% damage buff for the weapon alone, and consistent volatile rounds on demand. And if you complete the Cadiz, you can also get that extra damage reduction while in the air. Simple stuff like this will make the exotic feel more exotic by nature. To start, you're going to want to have a Feed the Void so each time you defeat a target with Void abilities, you will get Devourer. Then you want Child of Your God so that each time you place your rifts down and hit targets, you will send out a Void Soul that will drain enemies and grant you grenade and health energy back, while also weakening targets. Although this will be used for mainly healing when things get bad, and using Child of Your Gods will grant us a lot of benefits once in action, I would also advise you to use Chaos Accelerant as a in-between depending on the activity and difficulty. This is because if you intend to play endgame with this for example, then using Charlie or Gods with a healing rift makes more sense for longer survivability. If you feel confident in your skills though and can make Feed the Void work for you, then using Chaos and Accelerant instead and going full damage mode can also have its benefits as well. There is no right or wrong answers here. Fragments used will consist of common items that we are familiar with because of their strengths. Echo Remnant allows our grenades to last longer, Echo Undermining for a 50% debuff for grenades, and Echo Instability for allowing grenade kills to give us volatile rounds. However, as we are heavily using Devourer to sustain our character's health while using Manticore Exotic Traits, I would advise you to use the Echo Persistence so that we can increase the Devourer's effect for longer. This here, along with Undermining and Instability, is going to make doing any content a lot more easier while using the Exotic as you'll be able to stay for longer while on the ground or in the air. So for the mods and stats section, this will be relatively easy for everyone as the stats are limited down to only needing two active stat requirements. And except from the seasonal mods, the rest of the mods can be gotten easily or have alternatives used. Do remember that the point of the build is to enhance the effectiveness of Manticore and fix some of its weaknesses. This is shown through the stats section where we only have resilience and discipline at around a 70 to 100 tier level. Utilizing anti gravity Pulsar from Mandicore while in the air will place us in a very exposed area that is hard to escape from in most combat scenarios. This is a major weakness for any content with a high level of difficulty, and we have Devour on hand so that we can actually keep our health going, but also while resilience stat is around 70 to 100 level, as we need every little damage reduction available to survive some of the grueling fights. We can also add on well of tenacity for example with that extra 10% damage reduction, but this is way too small of a difference to use. Discipline has the same reason of use as resilience, since we'll be using Feed the Void for activated devour and then applying a debuff to targets and kickstart other things. With a high stat, it means key elemental wells such as Bountiful Well, Elemental Ordnance, Seeking Wells, and while of utility will play a huge role in keeping our abilities freely flowing for longer. As we plan to make Mandicore a major damage dealer, having damaging enhancing mods will also greatly benefit the build as well, since relying on just the weapon exotic trait that gives us a 40% damage increasement while in the air will not be enough. Fond Might will give us a 25% damage buff for void weapons, while Monochromatic Maestro will be giving you a 10% damage buff for both weapons and abilities once activated. Now, both of these do not stack with each other, but this will be stacking with Battle Harmony Exotic Trait, which is 20%, Echo of Undermining for that 15% debuff, and Mandicore once it's active in the air for that 40% buff. This here is going to give you a massive damage buff that will be consistent thanks to Battle Harmony's effects once your super is full, and how easily you can replicate everything once in action. 
Then once volatile rounds get added in, you then have an SMG that can deplete enemies health for minor up to ultra tiers. Leftover, I would recommend you then add on the Kinetic or Harmonic Siphon mod so that you can produce orbs of power easily. Ashes to assets for getting super energy via grenade kills and the scavenger mod for whatever heavy is being used. Now lastly, the weapons being used will be of course the Manticore Exotic. This is a 900 RPM Void SMG that has great base stats and can be compared to the Funnel Web down to a T. Although both weapon stats are heavily varied and Funnel Web has the advantage of being a legendary weapon, so its final form can change any time. The Manticore core design is around building up stacks of anti-gravity pulses so you can hover in the air for X amount of time and then make use of sweeping talents effects for an increased damage of 40%. As the weapon has a high risk reward factor built into it, it makes sense for me to build around the core strength of the weapon and also fix its weaknesses, which is one of the most biggest complaints available. Adding on more damage buffs via mods and subclass allows the weapon to build up its stacks faster while on the ground, but also allows the weapon to retain its level of strength even when you're not using the weapon's secondary effect all the time because of risk. When you do use this secondary effect, you'll at least be more prepared this time with Devour and your resilience stat being freely active and supportive. As we have covered both areas in and out, this will allow the weapon to be more useful in endgame if you wish, as you have choices now, which when used on its own, it never really had that before. To further reinforce our secondary, I have decided to use Retrofit Escape Aid with 4 times the charm and 1 for all as a heavy backup weapon to use against bosses. We have covered how lethal the weapon is in our Volatile Line build video, but in short, with damage buffs available and how crazy good Volatile Rounds are on a 900 RPM weapon, you can eat through one third of a boss's health without breaking a sweat. And the weapon being shown can be easily gone from the Season Pass alone if you grind for it. Now, having two 900 RPM weapons at once isn't common as a setup for most players, but when used correctly, it can feel like you're unstoppable on most days. If you have been having second thoughts or generally any thoughts in terms of using Manticore, then this should hopefully change your mind as it's based in an exotic funnel web. Constant healing, non-stop damage buffs and volatile rounds coming out in droves makes using Manticore a lot more fun than its base form and actually makes it more viable in terms of actively using it in air feature. The biggest issue with Manticore is that staying in the air makes you way too vulnerable for all targets and as this is linked into getting a damage buff, you have no choice but to use this feature extensively, or else the weapon becomes redundant. It also has the issue of magazines not being big enough, as you can run out of ammo fairly quickly and not be able to finish off a combatant that has a silver of health. I have found that these main issues are the reason why many players refuse to use it as it doesn't feel that rewarding enough, and I can see and understand the resentment of it. This is why I've gone with a style that allows us to retain damage no matter if we are on the ground or in the air and increases damage to make up for a shortfall in the magazine size. If the weapon had the device stinger origin trait as well, I could then see the weapon not getting such a harsh reception from everyone. But as it stands, the weapon can only be used in small group content. With the changes made to accommodate the weapon and its design, this should make the weapon and build as a whole generally more fun to use and actually give you a reason to use an end game and anything else now. You now have the ability to use the weapon as you see fit, and this build should support you with just that. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build down below, and if you want more stuff like this in the future, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.